Okay, so let's take a look here what's new in the new Renewan 24 release. So I'm recording this and it's in still in beta here. So I'm not sure if the documentation might have changed a bit uh, when it's now released. But uh, yeah, so the main thing here is Renewan XPU. So that's a XPU means that it's going to use GPU and CPU. We have the, the Llama system, so that's this layer material that was developed by ILM. Stylized looks, interactive diagnostics, and open color I.O. And then we have a bunch of patterns and other uh, bits and bobs that's been added. So I'm going to take a look at some of these now here in uh, this overview. And we can start with the Renderman XPU and see what that's all about. Okay, so here we have a traditional progressive rendering here using the like the RIS mode, the traditional way to use uh, rendering here. And let's now see where we can find the XPU. So if I go here to my render globals, render settings here and go to my renderman tab and go here to my features. So then we have the renderer here. So if you have a supporting, uh, then you can be able to here to switch over to XPU, for example, here. So let's, let's do that. And uh, I think actually this mode, I need to actually pause this render and restart it. And then we can see here, go to my render man and enable the viewport rendering here. And there we see it. And we can see here now, instead of having the spiral, it's essentially blast the whole uh, frame at once. So it's, it's a bit quicker here and uh, and more responsive. You kind of get the, the feeling and it cleans up a lot faster than if I would have the RIS. And I'm now gonna switch over to some comparisons where I'm gonna have uh, split this uh, left and right. Okay, so the test was when I hit the render on the viewport, then I synced these two videos together and, and uh, swapped it here in the middle. So we can see here that the CPU RIS is actually faster to first pixel in, in, in essence, but the XPU is gonna catch up because now it just blasts everything and you can see it's less noisy the first pass here. And I actually asked on, on the beta forum uh, about this because uh, the, the first pixel on XPU was a bit slower the first time, I think. And that's something that they're working on. It's going to come in uh, later releases, like faster first uh, pixel experience. But once you have this first pixel, it's, it's, uh, you can see it cleans up a lot faster and the interaction is uh, a lot faster. So. Yeah, it's just when you hit the render for the first time, I guess it has to load it to the GPU and, and do a lot of things under the hood. That's a bit more complicated than uh, just the RAS performance. Okay, so here in my second test, I have the same scene here and I'm just tumbling the scene here just to see how that would work with XPU. And we can see here the XPU kind of it feels like uh, it just Plus the whole scene at once, while the RS version, we will constantly see this kind of spiral in the middle or depending on what uh, order you have, while the XPU is just kind of blast the whole image and it cleans up uh, a lot faster here. So when I let go, it kind of just auto updates the scene while the RS side still has to then go in uh, this spiral order and start to render and you can see it takes a few times before they come to the same uh, convergence. And here we can see my XPU on its own here, just working on the, like the single asset and this is kind of how it updates. Um, yeah, kind of uh, nice to be able to work like this. And this XPU is meant for a look dev at this stage because it's not going to have exactly the same uh, behavior as the RIS. So we will still have to uh, render using RIS uh, for production. And this is the same, just tumbling using uh, the RIS. And you can see here, it's more or less spiral that you constantly see in the picture. If you do something 
like navigating a scene it's a bit uh, more like craziness happening here with the, all of these spiral updates happening there okay so next up here is llama and we're gonna do this in uh, maya so llama is this new layer material that uh, ships here and it's developed by ilm and you layer uh, kind, kind of uh, shaders rather than uh, like an uber shader so you you have diffuse conductors dielectrics and all of these uh, kind of individual shaders that you then have layering nodes to layer and the layering nodes is uh, add layer and mix and you mix this diffuse conductor dielectric sheen emission subsurface tricolor sss translucence and uh, yeah you can see you can layer all of these using these layering nodes so let's take a look here in maya how we can do and deal with that okay so here in hypershade in maya so yeah let's take a look here so we have the render man here and let's go to bxdf and the llama and the, the nodes so this is uh, the the nodes that's currently available so yeah how do we do this so there is um uh, let's talk, take now here and do a llama surface first. This is kind of the one that you attach to the object. So let's do that design material. And now we can here start to play here with uh, different uh, and, uh, these different shader. So we have the, the diffuse and uh, the speculars and all of that. So let's start uh, just the render here and, and just gonna make sure here I have it set to uh, this one, render man, and I wanna have my RIS going because Llama is currently only available for RIS mode. Okay, so let's go back to Hypershade here and we can see here off the bat nothing happens. So let's add now a, like, let's take a Llama diffuse here and see what happens. So I'm gonna take my out color here and attach it to the material front. So the basic here is just take the, the front and you see here now we get our diffuse shading going here. And we can see here. So yeah, in regular fashion, this is kind of the same as in Pixel Surface, I guess, like the, the color and all of that. Depends here what you wanna do and the roughness as well roughness of the diffuse so yeah this is this is the basic here so let's say that we want to add like a specular on top here so how do we do that so we can uh, for example uh, make a llama add if you want to do that so let's try that llama add okay we're gonna have material one it's gonna be the diffuse and then we want to then pipe a llama dielectric for example or llama conductor i mean llama conductor and let's take this one material two and pipe this one so yeah this as this is a module system you can essentially just try out here let's say that you want to uh, look at this individual here connect this like this material front and you see now it renders here as this kind of uh, metallic gold or, or something like that. And the settings for that is this uh, reflectivity. So you have here, as in the pixel surface had, you have artistic and scientific, where the artistic is this, uh, these two reflectivity and edge color and scientific, then you will actually blend IR values that you get from uh, like an index or refraction database and I already covered that in other tutorials how to get those index or refraction but I can link to it in the video description and now in the corner as well and you can see here we can set the, the roughness and something here that's kind of um, interesting with this llama new llama nodes is this tail parameter that then you can fudge, like if I go in here and and take this, zoom in here, we have this tail parameter that's kind of 
secondary uh, specular fudge or roughness value that you add. So when this is mix is set to zero, nothing's going to be. And if you set this, it's going to start to fudge the, the contribution here. You can see here now it starts to kind of add a, a bit of haziness around the reflections. And I think this one gives a uh, more realism. It's, it's a bit like the, the pixel surface had this GGX that also gave this, but now you can actually art direct this and you can say here how much. So these two settings essentially, I, I would think it's a bit like combining the, the traditional specular and the rough specular, but you now have it in one lobe here and, and you also have a bit more user friendly way to interact with this. And yeah, I'm not going to go through everything because uh, to be honest, I haven't had time to dive into each of these uh, into every uh, nook and cranny. So yeah, but you can do anisotropic, you can do iridescence and with like thickness values and, and stuff like this. Um, yeah, so, but let's say that we want to make a plastic and uh, you need diffuse and a specular. So I'm just going to take this over here to, uh, let's take it back to artistic. Let's take reflectivity, just dial this down something um, less reflective here and edge color. Yeah, so that's kind of uh, the base for uh, this, but you see, if we're going to make a plastic, you might want to have some color. So then we can add this. So this is where the, the Llama add comes into play. So let's hook this one up now and we will get the diffuse and hopefully the specular. And we can see here now I only get the diffuse. So let's take a look here. And that's because my weight here of this uh, component, the Llama conductor here is set to zero. So it's not going to be using that one. So let's now this is kind of the order and if i now add the weight here now we can see here that we start to get this specular reflection here and now it starts to look like a plastic so yeah uh let's take a look at that and let's say that we want to add like like a logo using a metallic on top of this let's take a look at how we can do that so we can now we can say llama layer, for example. I want to layer something else on top here. So we can we can say that we want to use this uh, portion here in the base and hook up into here, material base. I want to hook something on top here using a uh, mask. So let's take this first and just hook this up. So now we have a century prepared to add another type of layering or another type of effect on top here. Uh, so yeah, let's say uh, llama conductor or uh, yeah, like another llama conductor and we want to set this material top. So now we here have uh, like metallic uh, on top here. So let's take a Pixar, Pixar texture and um, hook up a, uh, a node or a, a mask that I have exported for this geometry. Or we can do it uh, simple here. Let's take a pixel checker or something and take this into uh, mix. And let's take a manifold. So I want to repeat this checker here a, a few times so we can see. So manifold 2D and result into the manifold. And let's see here. I want to repeat this like eight times. And now we can see here, now we are mixing between this uh, plastic and this metallic using this mask. But now let's hook up a texture instead of this uh, checker here. So we can see what happens when we have something more realistic, like a production stuff. Um, yeah, let's do that. I'm going to browse here to my source images. Okay, I want to convert this. Okay, so there we have this uh, now the logo here with 24 on top. Okay, so let's now uh, spice this up a bit here and add uh, another type of effect on top. So let's say they want to do something like a uh, varnish on top here. So we can do that as well. 
So I'm going to make another layer. So I want to have like a glass that totally covers everything with some kind of thickness. So let's take a look at that. Uh, I'm just going to scoot these over here a bit and make another llama layer. Okay, so I'm setting the base material and bypassing this one here again. So let's take this, uh, where is it? And uh, my dielectric. I'm just going to tune this here first. So let's pipe it in there and take a look here. So we can see here now it doesn't render correctly here. And that's kind of uh, because of this uh, compute opacity. And that's something I set here on my surface node. Uh, so yeah, if you have a uh, opacity, uh, you have to set this. I guess it's uh, like an optimization. If you don't need opacity in your material, it will probably be a bit faster. So yeah. And same here goes to interior. So that will be like, um, like absorption and all this type of thing. So I'm going to use absorption. So I need to set this as well. I'm not going to use subsurface. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to now make like a, uh, like a colored glass using my uh, interior here. So let's take absorption uh, color. I'm going to take something here like so. Yeah, there we have like a, a tinted uh, glass. So now I want to layer this on top of my previous. I'm just going to hook this up here again. Uh, I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to take my out color here to my material top. And we can see here nothing happens really now. Because I don't have any thickness of this. So this thickness is something in Llama layer you can add. And we can see a top mix. Uh, so now it's actually adding uh, like a the, this glass on top of everything but we can't really see the the color but this top thickness is gonna only apply when you have if i look here when you have a like absorption or interior effects otherwise it will uh, only use this value so if i now start here to dial up the the top thickness here we can see here a bit now it's one let's take to 10 we're gonna see here now it starts to behave more like a colored clear coat varnish on top here yeah so this is kind of uh, how i currently use the the llama system and it's gonna be very interesting to see how this new shader system will evolve and what other uh, type of uh, nodes we get so i guess it's easier to build new uh, lobes uh, and you can extend and add so, like these uh, shaders rather than having the pixel surface where you have like one big block of uh, code. Now you can just say, okay, I want to now have a different, uh, so some other type of effect and you can just build this uh, llama node and add it later on so i guess it's more flexible and more modular in that way so yeah it's going to be very interesting uh, to see here how this system will evolve and i will come back uh, later on using this llama nodes in uh, future tutorials as well here on the my channel and uh, see how i can integrate uh, texturing against this llama system as well so that's going to be very interesting <laughs> Next up here is the stylized looks and I have little knowledge in, in this section to be honest because yeah it's it's kind of a deep topic uh, seems like but if you want to explore this I uh, encourage you to go to into the examples here in Maya and go to the bottom here and you actually have a demo scene here that's uh, set up here uh, to use stylized looks. And I applied it onto a teapot in Maya and played a bit because here, if I go back to my Maya here, we have this stylized uh, looks swatch here where you can add lines and uh, hatching and tune lines and all of this stuff here. So I'm just taking this scene here that I opened. Uh, let's see here if I render it. I think I'm uh, missing some textures or something, but uh, we should get some tune lines here. But in essence, to use uh, these stylized looks, you need a few ingredients. You need uh, some AOVs. Uh, let's go to that. And the AOVs, you can see here, we have this. If I go here, we can say here, 
add the stylized outputs and uh, you add these you need to go into uh, if you haven't set it up uh, enable stylized looks and then this display filters is heavily involved also in the look and it's kind of i guess what it does under hood is to add like a mini comp here in uh, the order let's go into uh, lines here and go and see here if i can do something here uh, to my lines let's uh, close this outliner here and we can see here if we can start to mess here with the uh, with some of these settings here. If I now go and tweak here, we can see here, we can see here that it's actually starting to tweak the lines there a bit. Yeah, so I haven't dived into the stylized looks at all because yeah, it's, it's a lot of things here to test and uh, look at. So I would encourage uh, download uh, the scenes here and start to dissect these here and see what happens uh, so yeah that's a bit of stylized looks and i'm sorry i haven't uh, that much knowledge in this because yeah it's it's very deep here and so many configuration possibilities so i don't even know where to start to be honest uh, so let's uh, jump over and take a look at the other things we can find here and actually one of them uh, out of the bat here is this uh, live um, statistics so we can see here we can see here now when I'm rendering here we can see here what is happening live here and that's one of the new features we can see how many percent and how, how many iterations and memory usage and all of these uh, things here so that's something that's uh, interesting when you're tweaking see here how many percent is going for shading uh, rib parsing ray tracing and uh, lighting so yeah if you someone is predominantly maybe you need to go in and tweak something here if you spend a lot of time shading for example or ray tracing and yeah so that's something that's uh, good to have uh, a uh, an eye on when you're tweaking your scenes so have a look here at the live statistics. Another really good thing is that Renderman finally now have uh, native support for OCIO and ACES and all of that jazz. And yeah, some people are like, oh, that's not so fun. But yeah, it's, it's really good in the production pipeline to have uh, OCIO, proper OCIO uh, support. And we have it here on the features. You have to configure here. You can say Oasis 1.2 and you have a few others that I haven't tested. So I'm using Oasis 1.2 or if you have a defined OCIO profile, you can uh, use this OCIO here and it picks up, I guess, from your environment variable instead. And yeah, th there's a few things here uh, that's uh, then supported. For example, if you go to here to it and open uh, this one up and go to preferences, we can see here that make sure that you have uh, your preferences set for uh, the proper uh, OCIO. So let's go to preferences. Let's see where it is. It's behind here. And go to color management. This is new here. And uh, now it looks here at that it's using my ACES 1.2. And you then guess here, you get uh, input and outputs. So view, input, color space, and let's see here, image. And yeah, I don't, I'm not, let's render to it. i rather uh, go here and take it and uh, see here, view, image, color space. So it's scene linear. And in my case, that's ACES CG. Okay and uh, the view transforms you have a few here uh, srgb and rec 709 okay but uh, that's just one part of it now color management is also supported in the when you convert your texture so you if you go to your uh, tx convert here you can go in here and uh, you have to have a few uh, color space names in your files. Otherwise, it will assume that uh, your color space is uh, either uh, sRGB or linear sRGB. But you can override it, for example, here. If I take my 
tag IDs here. Uh, you can go in here and specifically override uh, the color space rules and say, okay, I know that these files were supposed to be data channels, so I set them to be data and converted them like this. You can also say uh, rendering space. That would be, in my case, if I say rendering, I would assume that it would be ACCG. You can say if a texture is uh, sRGB texture, for example, if you get a file coming from mega scans that you know is sRGB texture in the color, you would set it to sRGB texture, sRGB linear. If, for example, if you have a HDR that is uh, linearized, I would set it to sRGB linear or I guess data would also work in, in essence, but sRGB linear is probably more appropriate for an HDR. So yeah, there's a possibility to now to use uh, proper ACES configs and uh, OCIO profiles and all of that. And the texture is going to be converted into the right color space. And uh, you can see here data into ACCG. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, really good and I'm uh, looking forward to start using better OCIO profiles. Okay, so let's wrap this now and take a look at some of the other things here. So bump to roughness is one of them and also some of the new patterns. The rest here, I Blender, yes, there for Blender. I haven't used Blender, but yeah, it's cool, it's there. The community is big in Blender, so... That's real fun that uh, they can play with uh, Random Man as well. And USD, yeah, has better uh, further improvements. OSL, it's good that uh, the, the patterns and everything is migrated to OSL. And that's I guess that's a requirement for the new Llama stuff. I think uh, it's a lot of uh, OSL in that. And uh, so let's take a look at Bump to Roughness and uh, some of the new patterns, uh, mainly hex tiling. That's really cool when it comes to tiling so you don't get repetition and face and noise. So let's take a look at that as well. Okay, so let's take a look at Bump to Roughness and uh, let's see, Bump, Pixar, Bump to Roughness. So yeah, you, you use this node and uh, you insert your uh, bump texture here, so you browse for it. I've done it here on this uh, sphere here. And we can see it here. And you calculate uh, this one using... The, it needs to produce a lot of things under the hood, so this needs to go through TX Convert to calculate and make some specialized textures that it uh, generates for you and you also need to hook up this node here to the the normal the the roughness and anisotropic and anisotropic direction for this to work so you can see here all of these going from the bump uh, you need to connect it to all of those four places and we can see here on on this side here we have uh, like this uh, bump the same texture and on this one, uh, it, this one is bump to roughness and this one is, is bump. And let's see if I zoom out here a bit and I guess it converts. It reads a bit better here on the distance. You can see here now this one starts to look like kind of like it doesn't really have any uh, bump. This one still, you can still read uh, like the details on the distance. And it's, it's mainly on the distance you, you're going to start to see this. And uh, you can see here now, now when I zoom out, now it push all of the bump into the roughness and this one just goes totally blank here. It's just when you go really close, you can start to see uh, the bump here in a traditional, just using a bump here. So yeah, that's kind of, in the essence, this bump will show up in uh, the roughness channel and give details on a distance. And that in turn will also make this converge faster and uh, yeah, render faster in the end, I guess. So yeah, that's really good to see that we have a workflow with that. Okay, so yeah, so let's take a look here at uh, the hex tiling next. So I have this ground plane here and we can see here, it's set up here with uh, just a texture here going into my layered surface here 
and I'm mixing this. Let's take a look here. The hex tiling, there's a few ways to do this. I'm using the Pixar multi texture and round cube. And now instead of having this, um, you know, you have the regular before, now you have a hexagonal and that's hex tiling. So let's swap between uh, regular and hex tiling and see here. You see here, when I have hex tiling, let's go in frequency and increase this a few times here. You can see here, start to see like a re repeating pattern here. When I do this a few times, you can kind of see rows and repeating pattern here. You can see there's like a row going there. I swap this over to hexagonal. Now it's applied in a more randomized way and you won't see this repeating pattern as easily so that's kind of uh, the good thing and you can start to tweak now here as well you have a more tweaking uh, uh, jitter and stuff that you can play around with rotate jitter let's see here what happens okay so lastly here before we wrap this let's take a look at the phaser noise so what's phaser noise let's take a look just pump this in here and see oh that looks cool uh, yeah, it's a bit like sand dunes and uh, and also I'm not sure if you have seen there's a lot of videos on Instagram uh, if you're into math and stuff that's called like like a reaction diffusion and I think this kind of assembles a bit about that or sand dunes and yeah, it's very organic and noise that can be cool for environments and uh, these type of effects. Let's just go in here and see here. See what we can do. Uh, there's a ton here of, of settings I have to play with, so it's gonna be interesting. Uh, I guess the endless possibilities here, really. Uh, to see here, let's see 2D. What happens? That's more like a 2D, 3D. Yeah. So yeah, that's another type of noise that's added. And uh, I think that has to conclude this uh, introduction here to the new features of Random Man 24 because we're already up to half an hour and that's way too long for a YouTube video. And to mitigate that, if you have seen this to the end and haven't subscribed, so yeah, then uh, why don't you subscribe? Because you clearly made it to the end. And yeah, see you on the channel. Bye bye.